Hey everyone, this is Morgan and we're still splicing on my dial. I don't know how many I did so far. And that tray is gone, it's 48 right here. So, so let me just walk you through. This is our old fire wall here. And that's a uh, deal. As you can see, we have one bed hot water, so that's why we have to put the hot water. But meanwhile, we have to put something, which I remember if you saw the video last time, this is the one I'm going to put it. And let me just pop it up in here. This is the one we worked on it last time, with the two times ten gig card that we did. I don't know if you remember that, and that's the big cable, it's connected. We screw the firewall to the wall. It's my same. Let me just lock it up. So we're going to replace this. Which it has... That's four. Ten gig. We get a cable for the land side and a much more for the land, but we're gonna get rid of this. We have another way of doing it. So, in order to decommission that one, we have to replace it with this one, and we're also gonna do something else. We're gonna decommission this unit. Actually, we're gonna put it in standby because it's so loud. We get this unit. It has a very silent fan. Which one is now? We can barely hear it. This one will replace this one. Um, this one, as you can see, has 4 port, 10 gig aggregated. And this one has only 2. But that should be good enough. What is the point? We're going to use this one for the G-Pon. Ah, uh, sorry, for the OLT. For our g -Pons. This one, I still don't know what I'm going to use it for. Maybe for a second OLT? Not sure. But it also comes in the front. Well, for SFP, this red light, don't worry about it. It's just because we changed the fans and the fan has less temperature than the original one. So it triggered that light. But for a fact, you know, the fans are running. It's, two, it's a 48 port. Um, one gig plus another four SFP and another four SFP plus. So this one will be our um, core switch. So now um, the WAN is not going anywhere to the firewall. The WAN is going to be connected to a VLAN right here, and that way we can route some of the public IPs to our access points outside. But also we have. OLT right here where the GPON will be connected. So, so far, this is all we're doing today. Just kind of uh, uh, decommissioning some stuff and fixing some stuff and removing some stuff to get things going. But we're also doing some splicing. And uh, that's it for today. We're going to go a little bit farther in how we set the firewall. Right there through um, routing stick Cisco terminology to the core switch. So our WAN, our LAN, everything is in a core switch. So our router will be just routed the traffic. That's all it's gonna be doing. Plus um, we have the free radius server on it to authenticate clients. We also has the PP, PPPoE server also for the authentication for our GPONs and our routers. We discussed that. And we also run a couple applications to communicate with the Ubiquity controller and forward all the traffic to it. 
Acidic air sensors is also very important for traffic monitoring. We only monitor the traffic. We only detect malware and suspicious traffic. And I will explain that in the next one, or in one of the next ones. All right, so let me keep going. Talk to you later. So we are able to silence the beast. It's going to go for service. It's been good for three years. So now the replacement it's up. It's a lot of mess. I'll come back and fix it like always. And we're able also to switch everything to the switch on top. See now my wing, it goes to the switch. It does not go to the water anymore. Um, most of the stuff is handled on the switch side. Um, but this way, we can share that WAN. If we have extra public IP routed from the ISP, we can share them to a different routers. So it doesn't have to be just one. Okay, so it's a mess right here. It's kind of late today. Uh, the switch, it did took maybe 60 seconds that the network was down and then it picked up right away. It's been programmed uh, well, actually, the replacement router has been programmed in the lab with the same public IP available here. So we are able to generate that virtually. That way we can test our equipment before uh, swap them and eventually as a plan, it did work as a charm. So, we got right here, we're going to come back tomorrow and fix all these extra wires, take them out, dress these wires, a lot of them are just going to be removed because this switch is dead now. But I'm going to keep it here, only reason I'm keeping it, I'm going to copy the configuration, throw it here, keep it in standby, so if something goes wrong, we have a unit here to replace it, right? So, there you go, we're done today, we just made a mess to fix a mess. How about that? Alright, so we are here just testing out um, before I leave. I've been saying that for quite a bit. So, once we build the network and the fiber and the wireless and all the things, we also make, um, because RV Park is sometimes some pop-ups, so they need the Wi-Fi just for a night or something, and they don't want the free Wi-Fi, they want something that works, that really works. So we have built this one, which is the guest Wi-Fi. And if you are a user of the Ubiquity, you should know that the portal for the voucher and all that stuff. Uh, so here's our logo, guest Wi-Fi, they get the voucher from the office. Oh, they can call us if they want to and um, boom done now one more thing that we do in this we do advertise for our Wi-Fi uh, we do advertise sorry for our internet so here is the name um, what is it yeah this one Wi-Fi ad so when they click on it and they connect They will be redirected to a page, which is tell them that fiber is available in the park. And this is the FCC forum. There is no internet here, it's just a portal page that we added to the Wi-Fi. The price, our flyer, there is no contract month to month, the connectivity program, and then on top of that we add an image supplement for the park um, directory. Okay. And on top of that, we add another one. Let me pull it out. That will only advertise for the fiber. So we can add as many as we can. Actually, we are working to add some uh, pages regarding available restaurants in the, around the parks, available businesses, um, available RV repairs, shops, and all those things. So we're going to add them to our portal page. And then once client can browse that it could be different pages not just one page it could be the same as a website but they don't have to connect to the internet it's locally hosted inside the RV park 
so it is easy fast access to it there is no you know so this one is just a um, advertisement for our fiber and we still have to put the nutrition label we're not done with that yet it is so we can add as many Wi-Fi as needed uh, for different purposes even access to internet or just for information purposes um, can add Wi-Fi with videos and stuff but that's that's totally different story we're working on it so just quick review here how we do it um, this is nothing compared to what we can do but it's just a few uh, sparkles there you are. so now I'm definitely gonna go home it's kind of late